Do you have the cue on your end? Yes, I we're recording. Okay, yay, we are officially recording. Welcome listeners to Feel the Heal with Daisy. I'm so excited. This is my third collaboration on the podcast. And I am so excited to introduce Rachel Benton, which I mean, already divine, Benton and Fenton. And (laughs) I know, so it's just so funny because when I moved to Nashville last or almost two years ago, I was like really worried because I thought, oh my gosh, am I moving to like, like no, no offense to Nashville because I'm actually so in love with Nashville, but I was like, is this going to be a little too honky tonk for me? Like, am I going to be able to find my community and my tribe here? And I, as many of the listeners know, I have been exploring all kinds of modalities in uh, on my own healing uh, journey for so long. And I got this Facebook ad about doing at, about an event at Float Nashville, um, which is a business but with float tanks there. So you can go into the sensory deprivation tanks and um, they were doing ice baths there and um, cold plunges. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to try this cold plunge. And little did I know, I, that was what initially got me to get there, but I was being pulled there for so many more reasons. Mm -hmm. I was meant to meet multiple people there. Um, And then even since then, since us connecting and getting to know each other, we've just been finding alignment within each other and mirrors within each other. Mm -hmm. The more and more we get to know each other. And um, I love talking about trauma and I use the, the psychotherapy language of trauma, but the more I talk to you, the more I learn from you as well. And I, I've learned so much about float tanks and, um, what the, the, for me at first I was like, oh, they're just tanks, you know, they have their benefits, but I've learned so much more about really how they can be such a healing modality and space. Um, so I want to welcome you on and just let you kind of tap in and kind of however you feel called to interact with how I've introduced you so far. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And I'm so excited. And when you were explaining how we met, I was just lighting up inside because, you know, you don't know the backstory of that event at all. Um, But you said, you know, I saw it on Facebook. I, you know, I saw this ad and it got me to you. Well, you know, if anybody on here is a business owner, you never know. Like, is, is, are these ads a waste of money? You know what I mean? You're just like throwing money out the window and hoping that it works. So like to hear that it got you and us collaborating is amazing. And then that event was like, you know, we've talked and, you know, we, this might come up some, but, you know, I was like drowning in another project that I had in real estate and, you know, I was furnishing that estate and I'm sitting on the porch looking at the lake and I'm like, I just feel like we're supposed to do this event at float the season's about to change I feel like people need to get together I don't have the energy and the, the girl that I was sitting with she's like you know what don't worry about it give me the details let's pick a date I'll do everything for you and I was like really like okay and then she did she, she just put it out there and for those of you that weren't at the event which I think is most listeners like this event was so synergenic like it was like everybody that was attracted to whatever marketing went out, which was like, we had three weeks to execute this. It wasn't like just something that was like, you know, really thought about like a year in advance or anything. And so the people that showed up and the exchanges that happened, like I had um, somebody come up that had a table there and he was like, Rachel, like like I went to one of this, the conscious community events. And he was like, I had hundreds of people come past my table. And he was like, I had more business here. He was like, than I had when I paid way more money to have an event and had way more touches because it was like the right people were called to that parking lot. And y'all, it was a parking lot party. It was nothing like huge and fancy, but like the language I heard bouncing around, like everyone was on the same frequency for sure. And speaking the same language and on the same path. And like, it was dynamite. It was literally dynamite. And I'm so grateful that you came and you listened to that nudge. Um, And I think that's important. Like when we start to, 
I think when we start to trust and, you know, we both talk a lot about being embodied and like trusting your guidance system and the energy pulls and the nudges you get in your spirit. When you start to follow that, you kind of see this little magic unfold in your life because you're not coming from such a place of logic and mind. You're just being guided by what kind of lights you up, you know? So the fact that you saw that ad and then you follow the nudge and it led us to each other. It led you. I mean, there's several stories just in the people that you met that night that wouldn't have happened that were like lining up to happen. So, and I don't think we need to go into all those. I don't know if you want to or not, but like, it's really amazing um, how that happened. Um, yeah. I think that's super awesome. Yeah. It, I mean, it was incredible and it kind of just goes back to that, the whole idea of quality versus quantity like we yes. there were such quality connections there that I mean there were so many people I connected with there that made me feel really at home in Nashville yes. for for different reasons and um ones I I'm sure I'll continue to foster relationships with but I want to go into first like the floating because there was something you were saying earlier about when me and you were talking before we hit record about embodied abundance, and I'm sure we'll, you'll get to talk about that in a minute, but talking about like getting out of, you need like a language of your mind to give you permission to get down into the body. And mm -hmm. for me, I, well, for me, one of the first things that you told me about floating that stuck with me because I just now have started my career as like being an energy worker, working in somatic therapy, um, coaching women, like I'm doing a lot of energetic exchange and work. And one of the things that you first said was floating is a great way to like neutralize, recharge, rejuvenate your energy without requiring that energetic exchange from someone else. So like like when you go and get a massage or um, like if I were to go and try to find a way to decompress, floating is a way to do that without relying or having to exchange more energy. Yeah, and it's really huge. It comes up for me often because a lot of healers come and float Nashville for therapy. Um, and the, the phrase like heal the healers, like I feel it red, like ring in my head all the time as I'm like cleaning in there and, you know, interacting with people because, um, I think I get a firsthand experience of it because my sister's a therapist, so, you know, she'll open up and, um, you know, explain to me, you know, how it's hard for her, you know, to find a way to recharge because after you've been talking to people all day, like you spend 12 hours just talking and talking and talking, you don't want to talk, you know what I mean? Or if you've been doing like physical energy work, but this even reaches like for anybody that's caretaking, if you're a parent, if you're a teacher, if you're a nurse, if you're pouring into other people, which most of us are pouring into something other than ourselves all day, every day, we need to get poured into, but a lot of time we're overstimulated and we're exhausted. And so we don't want to be touched. We don't want to be talked to. Um, and the tank provides a space. I think maybe we need to explain like what floating is because yeah. floating, even though it's been around since like the 1950s, it's still a very like, I don't know, hidden modality that people don't really understand or they're terrified of because they've just seen it represented in movies. Um, so I'll explain really quickly, like what it is and then why it's so healing. I think it'll kind of lead into that. Um, but flotation therapy, the goal for anybody listening that doesn't know is sensory deprivation. And I know a lot of you listening are kind of on your own road to like trauma recovery. And when we experience trauma, our sensory system can just be very sensitive. Like it can be easily overwhelmed, easily stimulated because um, we're, you know, you're just, you're just sensitive in that way because it's been overstimulated for whatever reason. So the goal of sensory deprivation is to deprive those senses all at one time as much as possible. And so the suites are set up that way. So the rooms themselves, the lights go on and off by themselves. So no one controls the lights. Um, when you get into the tank, the tank, the door opens. It's very light, does not lock. It does not latch. We have one at Float Nashville that's like a big pool. So it's like a big bathtub for people that are just very, you know, sensitive to maybe you're claustrophobic or whatever, or you have a physical ailment, like you're very pregnant. Like it's, it's an amazing modality for pregnancy. And that's a whole other podcast probably, but 
um, you can get in easier when you're really pregnant to the bigger pool. But each tank is about 10 inches of water. It's got about a thousand pounds of Epsom salt in that water. And that Epsom salt is what's making you buoyant and it makes you float to the top. Um, and the water itself is heated to skin temperature. So that salt that's added is giving you anti-gravity. So we talked about the lights. There's no sound. There's no visual, right? So the lights go out. You're anti-gravity because of the salt. The water is heated to skin temperature. So what that does, once your body gets settled, the brain is no longer processing touch because the water feels like a skin. So the brain does not realize you're being touched. So that's why the water is that temperature. So you're no longer feeling touch. Um, and then the sound that you're experiencing while you're floating is just your natural rhythm. So the rhythm of your breath and the rhythm of your heart. So it's not, it's, you know, people are like no sound. And people want to, you know, some float spas will even bring in music, but we try to really get people comfortable with, like, it sounds scary, but it's really not. Like, just go listen to your own rhythm and just see where it takes you. And so once the mind gets into, it's able to have these, you know, the sensory system really relax and it's not processing any of that, um, it's able to heal and it's able to recover your body in other ways that it wouldn't outside of the tank. Um and one hour in the tank is equivalent to four hours of sleep. And that's how much, you know, cellular rejuvenation is happening. Um, but in the mind, your mind starts to take an altered state. And there's like what the movie Altered States. And there's really fun things that try to depict what's happening in, in the mind that seems super woohoo and floating, but it's just science. And when you're in this sensory deprivation environment, the lower hemisphere of the mind or the automatic nervous system really gets to relax. Um, so for people that are stuck in fight or flight or stuck in that trauma response, the body starts to feel so safe. And so it can relax the automatic nervous system. Left side logic starts to relax, which a lot of us, you know, raised in Western culture, we're conditioned to be very logic minded. And then right side creativity will ramp up. So right side creativity in the state, it's, it becomes a very dreamy state. Um, it also helps your brain waves to synchronize and get you into more of a theta brainwave dominant state. And that, that's the magic and that's the healing. And that's why it's so good for PTSD, so good for you know depression and anxiety. Um, so there's so many like mental effects to it. But then if you go back to the body, like just the physical body, when you're anti-gravity, the way it you know takes the pressure off of the joints. And then, you know, I mentioned that Epsom salts what's making you float, but Epsom salts are really high in magnesium. And so magnesium is a really great for anti-inflammatory and that magnesium also helps to relax you. It's like one of the main questions I get, it's like, oh my God, 75 minutes or 90 minutes. There's no way I can stay still for that long. But that magnesium starts to absorb into their body and their bloodstream within about 15 minutes. So it's helping you to relax. And then the number one thing they say when they get out, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe it's already been 90 minutes because it goes by so quickly because you're in a different brain state. Wow. Wow. I, even I'm learning so much more about floating because it's a lot, right? It's a lot. It's so incredible. And I'm just curious. So, because I know about, you know, you, as you already know, I, I like love st studying the language of trauma and understanding. And I always talk about these different modalities, especially within the recovery community, um, people that are recovering from substance abuse there's a lot of, you know, they're seeking, they're seeking modalities of healing that get them into higher states of consciousness or into that like space where they're, they're more deeply, profoundly connected with self while also being embodied. And so when you were talking about the, the senses being deprived, but then you were talking about the heartbeat the, the internal rhythm of our bodily functions, we get so attuned to that. Mm -hmm. And in trauma uh, informed or trauma informed yoga and somatic work, one of the key fundamental components that they emphasize when we, when we bring that to clients is to help clients develop what's called interoception, which is the eighth sensory system, which is sensing from the inside out, like sensing the internal organ functions, yeah. 
understanding what it feels like to have the heart beating in your chest, the breath moving through your body. And as you were describing that, it was like a light bulb in me. And I was like, wow, like that is what they're getting into directly is into, because I think too, in, in that world, in that language, we use the felt sense. And it's always about, you know, to getting embodied through the felt sense. And it's so much beyond just the five senses. And so as you were talking about that, it's like people are sinking into that. So they're still embodied, even though their senses are deprived, while also getting into that like altered consciousness, which is like you were saying, the creative space. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, it helps hone that sense, right? So you talk about the felt, the, did you call it the felt sense? What'd you call it? Yeah. F-E-L-T? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're depriving your five senses that we're used to, then it, it heightens. So think about when someone loses their vision. Like if someone is blind, then they have their other senses are more heightened, right? They might smell, but they might be able to hear better or be more tuned into hearing than maybe you and I who have visual sense would be, right? You rely on other senses. So when you deprive your other five senses, this felt talking about heightens. The more you float, and this is exactly what meditation does too, right? Because mm -hmm. in meditation, we're practicing tuning in to the felt sense, tuning in to the present moment, but the float tank takes that to the next level. I mean, it takes you to like monk status meditation because it's doing all that hard work for you. So all you're doing is surrendering and relaxing and enjoying that sense. And the more you do it, the more I feel like it's like a muscle. It's you're more tuned into it. So then when you bring your other senses back online, y'all, that is magic. Like I am telling you that I see the green leaf on the tree. I will hear like the bird, like one bird out of every noise that's going on outside. I can tune into this bird. You know what I mean? And it's like, Literally, I would just get lost in life like I did when I was a child, like the clouds, like I can play with my kids in such a grounded way because my sensory experience is just as clean as theirs because I get like literally the float tank like washes your sensory system. It's almost like a chalkboard that's been dirty. You know, you like erase it with something dry and you write on it and it still looks mucky in the background. Where like if you wash your chalkboard with water, it gets it really nice and crisp. And then when you write on it, the letters stand out. I feel like that's how our sensory sense, you know, system is. And so most of us have walked around for decades, never getting a break from any sensory input. I mean, a lot of us even sleep with sound machines, you know, like we're constantly exposed to some type of stimulus and we're not getting that break. And so it just starts to tune you in and then you can really live life. You know, we were talking about the nudge that you had and like you followed that nudge and it, it led you to this amazing event. Well, you felt that nudge and you're aware of that nudge because you're aware of that sense, that sense in your body because you've practiced tapping into that. But I'm sure you just like me, I remember a time in my life where I didn't feel that. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I wasn't in tune with that. But like practicing something like flotation therapy, I mean, literally, if I would have found float first, I would be decades ahead. Do you know what I mean? Like floating almost skips so many different things. I don't know about you. I started kind of with yoga. So like for me, it was like, okay, you remember, I don't know if you ever remember your first yoga class, but I remember mine. And I was like so focused on getting my body right. You know what I mean? And my head was screaming at me saying it was hot yoga. So it was like cussing me out. Like, what are you doing in here? Like, this is crazy. And then, but by the end of that class, I was like, oh my God, I didn't think about work. I didn't think about numbers. I didn't think about my boss cussing me out. Like for an hour, I did not think about anything but surviving and that's what kept me showing up, which sounds crazy, but I needed that intensity to cut the noise out. That's how noisy my life was. I needed to like, feel like I was dying in order not to hear the noise of my life. And I think a lot of people are still there, but then like through, the, through time, my body got used to the poses. So then I got to tune into my breath. Then finally I figured out how to breathe with the movement. So then, then I got to listen to my thoughts and then I got to quiet my thoughts. You know what I mean? It was like this, this the progress over years, you know, of practice. Or like, I think if I would have started the float tank, like it just does the work for you. So I don't know 
if that's good or bad, but it's definitely a great addition to get people kind of tuned into that sense way faster than if they had to find it like little by little, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. And also I'm, I'm curious too, because you've shared some, but are there any experiences of like clients that you've had at the float, uh, Nashville where they've had, like, have they shared, have there been any breakthroughs or any Thing that you feel like you would feel comfortable sharing or, or anything that like kind of offers like wisdom of other people's like ex personal experiences. Yeah, all the time. I say, um, you know, a little bit about me as a person, like I've, you know, been on my own healing journey, but then for work and I work in the world's been in the very masculine energy of business and real estate and money and all that, that, and um, I did not open Float Nashville. I did not build it from the ground up. It was an investment that kind of got brought to us. And it, that nudging of my inner self, it just, it felt right. And we moved with it. And here we are. And I say all the time that Float Nashville was the biggest gift from spirit. Because y'all, the world is full of such beautiful people. Like, you know, I, you know, got Float Nashville during COVID, you know, the world's falling apart. You know, if you tap into the news or social media, you think people are just awful. You know, there's this, there's polarized, polarization going on everywhere, right? And just, you just, and even being in the business world, you know, you're just so exposed to one thing. You know, here I am flipping houses. So I just talked to contractors or I just talked to the bankers or, you know, like just this very like niche little group of people. But when you're in Float Nashville and you're sitting at that seat of being the person that holds the space, you're getting to watch all these amazing people come through the door. And, you know, you, you know, you said, you know, I was afraid when I moved here that I'd be alienated because it does feel like that. Right. And like, until you get into environments where you're like, see other people like you and you're like, oh, there's a lot of us. Well, there's a lot of us in Nashville, like just just coming through Float Nashville alone. Like, and, and that's why I feel like there's, we need a place together and that's a whole other story, but like, there's tons of beautiful people. And that when you sit at the seat of being the person to hold the space, you get to watch these people walk in the door and then they go in the float tank. And when they come out of the float tank, like the energy of them walking in to the energy of them coming out, they're like 20 pounds lighter and their eyes, like most people it's not everyone but you can see i almost talk talk i always say like oh like they tapped in like oh they got there because their eyes there's just glow in the eye like like they got there you know what i mean they, they set with their highest self and they're like you know and i believe in raising your frequency right and like that's what they did um but so many people um will just open up and share things that they would normally not feel comfortable sharing because when you're able to get into theta brainwave, I like to say when they come out, you're not tapped into ego at all. So I feel like in my understanding and my experience with my own, my own life and my own journey, that the ego comes a lot from our logic mind. I feel like in my journey, ego is logic mind and there's nothing wrong with that. We need it in life. It's our protection. It's what kind of makes the way for us. Um, but a lot of us wear it first and we lead with that protection. And when people come out of the float tank, left logic's gone. I mean, we just did this amazing comedy show. It was hilarious. And like the comedians were different. Their, their whole acts were different because they get out of the float tank and they come on stage. Well, logic is gone. You're just in heightened right brain creativity. You're just in your highest, truest self. There is no masquerading. There is no pretending like you are just you, the essence of you. And in that space, like there's just beautiful conversations that happen. You know, I had one guy and he came in, he was like probably, I don't know, in his sixties, he had driven an hour to get there. He was just coming for his wife. You know, she was in chronic pain. He was going to float to support her. It wasn't like I'm floating because I was called to float. Like he was just floating. And um, at the time I was writing some curriculum on trauma and uh, it was around financial trauma, but but uh, him and I were talking in the beginning and he was very hard. And he was like, he literally said like, um, oh, you think you were raised poor? Like, what do you, what do you call poor? What do you call, you know what I mean? He was like very argumentative with me, like very ego to ego, right? Like my trauma was worse than your trauma kind of thing. And, and, you know, with me, I just, 
I don't try to like one up. I was just like, oh yeah, like very interesting perspective, whatever. He gets into the float tank. And when he comes out, like he's telling me stories of his childhood and he's crying, but he, like he was lit- literally went from the 60 year old, but like, kind of muscular farm man to the little inner child in him. You know what I mean? And like, he was able yeah. to tell me these raw, real stories, not about like in a defensive way, and we had some, cra- like, he gave me breakthroughs. I think I gave him breakthroughs because it was more of a soul-to-soul connection. It wasn't a left mind to left mind connection. And I could go on and on uh, about stories like that. But, you know, when you're in that space, you know, when you're in theta brainwave dominance, you can heal from trauma because the body feels safe enough to bring it up for you. So what I've learned in my own healing journey, and again, I am not a therapist. I am not a trained doctor. You know, I have just had my own experiences and feel like I've been taught, you know, through my own inner guidance. And when, and in my experiences of healing trauma, when my, um, when my, you know, sensory center, kind of my automatic nervous system is so relaxed for me, that's when the trauma surfaces. And in my experience, it's like, okay, my body, it's almost like when I was in labor with my babies, when I surrendered and I felt safe and relaxed, that's when the baby came, right? That's when, that's when the transition happened. But a lot of women in birth, like if they're having a home birth and they switch to the hospital, everything stalls for a while because the body has to get safe again, right? For the the chemicals and endorphins to start to release to actually bring the baby. And if the mom never feels safe, the baby never comes. And for me, that's happened a lot in my trauma experience. If my nervous system isn't regulated, trauma doesn't come up because the body doesn't, the body knows you're not ready for it. Like it would literally probably send you over the edge to actually think about X, Y, Z because you're not regulated. So I think so much of it's like nervous system regulation and in the tank, the nervous system gets regulated. Like, you know, we have a lot of neuroscientist stuff in the, in the float community and we hook people up on EKGs and look at different things and like people's blood pressure drops 20 basis points within 15 minutes. Um, Your breath, like there's just so much that goes on in the nervous system function that gets you regulated. And that's why some of this trauma can come up and be processed um, because the body's safe enough to do so. And that might seem very scary for some people, but I want you to know that it's not a scary experience because it's not like you're having to relive the trauma. It just means that you might feel like an extreme emotion or you might get scenes um, from an experience, you know, like, um, do you mean to give you some examples of that? Sure. Yeah. Um, like, you know, at one point in time I was floating and I got scenes from like, I had a miscarriage before. And so I started feeling like, like my body was needing to purge, like purge that, that trapped grief. You know what I mean? So I was able to like visualize scenes that have happened before, you know, in, in that time period. And that was something I kind of had blocked out and it brought up all of these things. And I was mourning and like physically kind of like my abs were tightening and things were coming out. The grief was coming out of my body but the, but the experience didn't end there, you know, like once I kind of purge everything from that, that sacral, like life energy area, all of a sudden the energy moved to my heart. Um, and I saw kind of a vision of that baby and we were able to, I grieve for that baby. I felt that baby's grief for not being connected to his mother because I kind of just blocked him out of my experience. So we grieved together, but then my heart opened and we started sharing like love energy. So there was deep gratitude for one with one another and like really like euphoric love energy coming from that heart center to that baby. And then when I was coming out of my experience, like I came out in that high of that euphoric love. So like I went to the deep, like the depths of my grief, but then up to the highest energy that you can feel in your body, which is, is love, you know? And it was like this pure heart energy, energy love. So like, even though it was painful to kind of go down, like it shot me up higher than I could have. And I got out of that experience feeling literally 20 pounds lighter. Wow. I mean, that is just so profound to listen to because I think too, like what you're saying is, you know, I think a lot of us, when we 
think about healing traumas. And it's kind of like what you were saying about that man too, that came in is our ego mind, our logic mind wants to identify and attach to that prefrontal cortex memory or imprint of the trauma. And unfortunately, we don't get to heal so much of our traumas until we learn how to sink in and trust that the healing is not always going to be validated by memory. And you have to sink into that. Like, it's almost like, and you're saying that you were using the word like regulating the nervous system too, which I've learned that like, a regulated nervous system is one that can like get activated, but then it, it down regulates. It doesn't mean that you're never activated or you're never shut down. Absolutely. It's you go into those places without getting stuck there. And I was just getting such a visual as you were describing it, because it's almost like when you sink into that, into that space, that's holding you that safe place, that container of the float tank, you allow your body to really tune into what needs to be activated or yeah. what's been shut down for so long so that it can come up, but it doesn't come up too much to the point where you get trapped or stuck in that trauma response. Right. You just allow it to play out. And, and, then, right. and that is what the healing is. And I love just how you're like the way you're describing it, because it just, goes completely aligned with everything all these other modalities that are out there you know all of the the leading language around trauma is like we have to move into it yeah like you have to move into your trauma to heal it but you have to find a place that's comfortably uncomfortable yeah. and it's almost like you're just describing like this is a profound little you know vessel or portal to give to get you that immediate access to allowing those things to come up as long as you can trust, you know, that you might not get the cognitive memory of something you might not get, right. you know, the, the very visual, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but you have, to, it's a way to trust, but learning to trust the body again, while you're being held in a, in a regulated yeah. container. Yeah. And I think you made some really good points because you have to feel safe in the space. And so through a lot of the research that's been done with flotation therapy, the sweet spot for people usually is the third float. And the reason why is because it's not like the other floats are bad. I want to say it's almost like priming you. And, and this isn't like 100% of the time. It's just the majority of the time, right? You might get in your first float and have a dynamite experience. Like I remember my first float and like the last 15 minutes, I did get a very intuitive hit. And it was like, it was like for me, a new drug, you know what I mean? Like I got to go back. I got, you know, I'm like, oh my God, that was amazing. But for people like, you know, I already had years of practice kind of dropping into that space. You know what I mean? So that's probably why my first float was so profound. But for people that don't have practice or just starting out, hold the faith because after three floats, like the very first float, your body's more like excited and curious, like, wait, what is this? Cause it's fun. It's like, it's fun to be in that weightless environment. It's, it's different. So the body's just trying to figure it out. But then, and then by the second float, you kind of remembered like what you didn't like about the first one, whether it was like where you wanted your arms or like, oh yeah, splash my eye in the water stung. Or like you figure out your little tweaks, you know? And then by the third float, you're just almost immediately sinking in. And I was just telling you, you know, we did that experiment with the comedians and they did, they did three floats, a third float, they went on the stage and we did a Q and A afterwards and they all agreed like the third float for them was like their sweet spot. Um, and I think with anything like a regular practice, like we have memberships for people that want to make it a practice that makes floating less expensive. They can put it into their life like once a month. Um, but the more you do it, the safer you feel. And, you know, you were talking about like, you know, feeling that spot where you're un, like you're comfortably uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think the safer you feel in the environment, the more willing you're kind of like, you kind of have to open up to surrender. You know what I mean? So like, as it starts to get uncomfortable, you can, you know, logic can kick in, you know, I'm safe. I'm supported. I'm held. Like you, you'll come back to your breath or your mantra or your counting or whatever to keep you there. Because I'm telling you, even with that experience that I had with that day, 
that day I was so regulated that I really didn't need any type of therapy. I was doing it because I need, I wanted to get into theta and it was like something I planned and I just wanted to do it. And so when it started to take me down, I was freaking out because I was actually having a meeting that night. I'm like, no, my energy is so good. I don't want to go there. Like, no, like inside I'm like, no, no. And then my knowing was like, no, trust it. Like trust that you have the ability to stay regulated. Like, let's just go here. And so I didn't like jump up, get out of the tank. Like I allowed myself to keep surrendering, surrendering, surrendering. And then it proved to me, like, you know, basically like you surrendered so much that it was almost like that, like a bow, you know, you got pulled back, but it shot me so much further. And like, I got out of the tank with better energy than I went in with because I was able to continue to surrender to that experience. I stayed to the end and got that kind of euphoric high. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, they, it, there's that saying that constriction happens before expansion. And so it's just that in that image of you constrict a little bit and then you expand, you constrict, expand. And so it's like being in the float tank, you're literally feeling the constriction happening in your body. And then that release. And And you're so aware of it because you're anti-gravity. Yeah. It is insane. Like, and one thing that happened to me one time, cause you can feel your insides. I mean, literally when you're in the tank, because that's all you have, all you have is the inner, the energetic of the being is all you're left with. And so one day I was floating and I just got the urge to smile. Like, so I'm in this dark thing by myself and I'm like, this is so weird. So I smile, but when I smiled, I could feel the dopamine hit happening. So like it would, it like, you know, from the base of my brain on then I felt like my like your identity is, you know, like your belly area, like just flood with this warm energy. And I was like, oh my, and then like I quit smiling and I was like, do it again. And so I did it again and I feel it and, I stopped, and then do it again. So I did like six or seven rounds of it. And then the knowing, like my knowing my high self told me like the message that day was like, you do not need to wait for an external experience to create joy. You mm-hmm. create your own joy through the simple act of smiling. So like, don't wait for something to smile at, like you hold the key, you hold the power to your, your joy and your experience. And like, it was so profound because like right now when I smile at you, I don't feel the dopamine rush because I, my, my body's so heavy. You know, there's things that, you know, oh, like, you're taking so much more information than yes. just a smile right now. Like you're, yes. you have so much more intake where in there you're stripped of a lot of the sensory and yes and it was like really really uh, like enlightening of like oh wow like we do have more control and like have you ever been a really tough workout and instructors like smile show me your, and you're like you just want to flick them off like what like i'm not but now that i'll do that i'll smile through my intense workouts because like i know from the tank that it really does work you're tricking your body and you're creating a new okay. neural pathway you're yes. saying you're saying, hey, body, we love doing this. Yeah, <laughs> we, love we can do this. this. Yeah, we can do hard things. Yeah, so that what was like so fun thing. So I know you've said you've seen people, like you've witnessed that like weightlessness as they come out. So as a long, like a long-term floater, you float a lot more. Have you actually noticed any like physical body changes for yourself? Because from a somatic perspective, like we know that we literally carry our traumas in our body. So like it, it, we might have a caved in chest and walk around with that. We have like, so our traumas are held in holding patterns, constriction patterns, bracing for impact patterns. So as you're releasing through floating, have you noticed where you're like, wow, like suddenly after a few months of floating, I just kind of started walking taller, like you said, you have the capacity to just smile, you know, on cue more, like, because you're more attuned to how that feels in your, in yourself, you know, is, did you, have you noticed anything like that? Yes, I, there's several things. So I think a lot of my trauma came from birth. Well, like the experience of motherhood, like I had a lot of infertility issues for years, and then I had a miscarriage, and then, you know, the birth, birth you know two births back to back and and all the things I think all women go through that we don't talk about how traumatic childbirth is for the woman because it's just like part of it you know and so I don't think we open up as much but 
I, you know, experience, you know, you know, when we're pregnant for maybe there's men listening, but your abs separate when you're pregnant. Right. And it happens very effortlessly when you're pregnant, but to bring those abs back together, especially, you know, two babies back to back for me. Um, and I often would have told myself that I was weak. Like I felt like I had a weak, um, abdominal area. Cause I did have like three fingers spacing in between and like, I just didn't feel strong. Like I knew I was limber and I was healthy and I practiced yoga and I moved my body and felt confident to move my body, but I didn't feel strong. And when you're in the float tank, like, I don't care if you're 500 pounds, you feel sexy and you feel strong and you feel, oh, it is like a sensual yeah, thing. Nice. Even though you're getting rid of sense, like the body feels amazing when it's weightless. And like, you can, I could feel my muscles and the body just, you know, if we surrender to the body, it, it just, um, are you good? Yeah, okay. we're good. Okay. We're good. So if you surrender to the body, it kind of just wants to move. You know what I mean? Like it, it will just lead you and guide you. So like in that float tank experience for many months, um, there was this abdominal like movement that my body would just do like a very effortless like almost like a crunch and I would like feel the pelvic floor engage in ways that I could not feel it outside of the tank like it was very aware of that that muscle and when we're pregnant when you have any in injury like that like if you like like you know when someone has to relearn to walk again because they've had trauma to their legs or something when we're pregnant our brain actually disassociates from those muscles because the muscles are pulled apart so we have to retrain our brain of like, hey, this muscle's here. Let's reconnect mind and muscle so we can pull that pelvic floor in. But in the tank, I became so aware of that whole area that I was able to practice these movements. And just a few months ago, I started going to a pelvic floor therapist. And she's like, oh, my God, like you have no spacing in your abs. Your pelvic floor, you can engage every muscle. Like I was doing things, and I know, I know it's from floating. Cause I didn't have any other. And like my last baby was born four years ago. So like my regular float started when she was probably like two and a half or three, you know what I mean? So it's like that experience in the float tank helped heal. And like, I went to her curious of like, you know, do I need surgery to do this? Like, what is it? And like, she just verified like, no, your abs are good. Like you're strong. Like we just need to build strength in them now. Like you're back together, you're limber. Let's build muscle. And so now for me, the float tank in my physical body has like, it reminds me how strong I am, you know, like I feel my muscles in a way that I don't feel them in this space that we're in right now, you know? Wow. I mean, that is just like literally feel the heel. Like you literally yes. see the float tanks, like yes. just to tie it into the theme of the podcast, but like, yes. like, I feel like that's where so much dis-ease, disorder you know, yes. distress or trauma comes from is just that disconnect with yes. that. And like you said, there's just at all times we're intaking so much beyond the conscious mind. And this modality helps you really go in and, and literally super attuned to what lays beyond that external intake, but more the internal from inside out. And yes, I mean, Wow. I just, we need so to make you, um, so by the time people are listening to this, they could go to float Nashville's, you know, website and book an appointment and have a, they can just type in the code, fill the hill and then they'll get $10 yes. off. Your float. I think that, yes, would be let's, cool set that up. Let, yeah. let's set that up for sure. Yeah. And I mean, just for the sake of time, I mean, we could literally talk forever. Like I, I'm actually like, so I want to hear everything about like floating and pregnancy. I feel like yes. we do need to do something about that. Just also just like something where we share because so much of what you shared about motherhood and being a mother and, you know, there's this saying about trauma taking on too much too fast. And like, we don't talk about the fact that when we become mothers, we take on a lot of moms, especially if you're a highly sensitive person, it's just too much too fast. Yes the sensory overload for your nervous system of having to co-regulate a child, you know? So there's so much more we could like really- And you're sleep deprived. 
And that's why, like, if there's any new moms listening to this, like, find a float center near you because one hour in the tank is equivalent to four hours of sleep. Like, it will restore you so you can just keep surviving, you know, because it really is. Like, when you have an infant, that first year is, like, pure survival mode. Like, you're just surviving. And And you don't know you're going to come out. Yeah. And then it triggers all of the trauma you had that you didn't know you had that you're like, what? I never had trauma. And then you become a new mom and you're in survival mode. And then after that, it like opens you up to like so much. It's such a gift. It's such a blessing. Like, yes. but, but yeah, like, I love that you are such a voice for that and it's inspiring me. And, um, I'm just like always blown away when I feel called to ask someone to come on the podcast because it literally ends up being an hour long, like spiritual experience for me, where I'm like, oh my gosh, I need it. I just, if I'm the only listener of this, like that's all I need. <laughs> yes, I love it. Amazing. But um, yes, yeah, so for all the listeners, um, if you want to like shout out yourself or like any, anything that you want them to follow or anything like that, go ahead and shout it out now and I'll put all the info in the description. Well, you can find, so specifically on floating, just find us at floatnashville.com. Um, there's also Float Nashville on Instagram and Float Nashville on Facebook. Um, and it's really easy to make an appointment, but if you need to call in for any reason, all of the contact information is on the website and on the social media handles. And then we'll also do fill the hill. So just use your, um, what you don't call it a QR code, what do you call it? A discount code. Feel the heel. Okay. Yeah. So there'll be a discount code, feel the heel for anyone that wants to use that for their first float. If you're here in Nashville, or if you're just passing through and want to try it out. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to pause this. Okay.